the Conseil National de la Résistance and the Forcé Française de la Intérieur, the French resistance and its path to a unified stand. When we think of the defeat of France during World War II, we often think of the Axis powers' military marching into France in victory. However, we also think of French soldiers and citizens rising up across France to create a neat, organized, and widespread resistance to unjust German authority. In reality, the French resistance, known to the French as La Résistance, was an unorganized series of illegal acts, assassinations, and violent protests carried out mostly by small bands of political extremists with no affiliation to each other, the former French government, or the Allied powers. Some of these unfortunate truths were changed thanks to the actions of a few courageous individuals who worked to unite the French resistance. After much labor and sacrifice, the goals of these individuals were accomplished in the form of the Conseil National de la Résistance, which, along with the Force Française de la Intérieur, provided La Résistance with unification under the authority of Charles de Gaulle's French government in exile and the ability to contribute to the fight to restore the French democracy, proving that the French people had the will and courage to take a stand for their country and its allies even after France's military defeat. The Conseil National de la Résistance and the Force Française de la Intérieur united the French resistance to the Axis occupation of France during World War II and led it to take an aggressive stand against the Axis powers and pursue a vision of the restoration of an independent France through cooperation with the Allied powers as well as through a variety of independent efforts. In the 1930s, the French economy was in a state of ruin. France had faced heavy casualties, damage, and expenses during World War I. The effects of the worldwide Great Depression were being felt throughout France in the form of widespread poverty. Many French citizens felt that their government could not provide for their needs. New political parties gained support, with many citizens wanting to change their government to match their image of an ideal government. These parties included fierce supporters of ideas such as communism, socialism, and fascism. After Germany, now controlled by Hitler's Nazi party, formed the Axis powers and invaded several bordering countries in 1939, both France and Great Britain declared war, forming the Allied powers and starting World War I. In 1940, Germany began to move, conquering small countries until they reached France. Between the World Wars, France built fortifications called the Maginot Line stretching across its eastern border. Although the French military and government claimed that the line was undefeatable, Germans quickly entered France by using tanks to breach the border. By June 14, 1940, Paris had fallen to the Axis powers. The Germans divided France into two zones, known as Occupied and Unoccupied France. Occupied France was ruled directly by Nazi forces, while Unoccupied France was ruled by Vichy France, a puppet government created and controlled by the Axis powers. Henri Philippe Pétain, a former French war hero and the man who officially surrendered to Germany on the part of France, was placed in charge of the new government. Members of the Vichy government believed that France should cooperate with Germany to preserve itself. One of the earliest resistors to German authority was Charles de Gaulle. De Gaulle was a French general and World War I veteran who had not trusted the strength of the Maginot Line. High-ranking officials did not listen to his advice about the line's weakness to tanks. After the fall of France, de Gaulle wanted to continue the fight against Germany. He fled to England where he founded the Frances Libres, a French government in exile. The Frances Libres was recognized as an Allied power and Frances Libres troops would later fight alongside Allied troops in battles. Despite de Gaulle's actions, most French citizens were shocked and devastated by the defeat of France. They reluctantly followed the orders of Vichy France and the powerful Axis powers. However, a few French citizens were unwilling to accept the defeat of France. A stand against German authority was growing in France just as in other Nazi-conquered countries. The French Resistance, or La Résistance in French, started as the patriotic acts of individual citizens who chose to stay loyal to France. As time passed, the nature of La Résistance began to change. Small organized resistance bands formed. Despite the aggression of the underground Résistance movement's stand, there was little unity among Résistance bands. One reason for unconnected bands was that any one resistor could only reveal a few of his or her fellow resistors if they were captured by the Germans. Another reason for the non-unified nature of La Résistance movement was that La Résistance members came from a variety of often conflicting backgrounds. The Résistance was made up largely of communists and members of other politically left parties. 
other resistors were more politically right. After the war, Résistance leader Raymond Albrecht commented on La Résistance's lack of unification by saying, I never joined the resistance because at the beginning there was nothing to join. Realizing the potential value of La Résistance to the Allied war effort, de Gaulle sent Juan Moula to France in 1942 with the task of uniting Résistance bands. His work among La Résistance led to its eventual unification as the Conseil National de la Résistance. Moula had been a local government official in France until he was arrested by the Germans in 1940. After he failed to commit suicide, the new German-controlled government fired him from his position. He went into hiding in France but eventually went to England to meet with de Gaulle in 1941, after which he became a representative of de Gaulle. After parachuting into France, Moulet created links between résistance groups and the Français Libres. His tireless stance for unity enabled him to unify la résistance into the Conseil National de la Résistance, or the CNR, by May 1943. The CNR was an organization that brought the major résistance groups together under the authority of the Français Libres to take a strong stand against Germany. Unfortunately, a traitor in the CNR triggered the discovery of a secret CNR meeting by the German police on June the 21st. The Germans arrested many résistance members, including Mula, who was tortured in prison and died on a train headed for Germany. Mula's death led to a decrease in the efficiency of the CNR. Despite the loss, la résistance continued to grow. When the Germans created labor drafts to forcefully bring young Frenchmen to work in factories in Germany, résistance-affiliated newspapers urged the would-be workers to resist the draft. Many of these young men joined the rural guerrilla bands known as the Maquis. The Résistance newspaper Combat praised these Frenchmen, saying, By disobeying this order, they will serve our land. As the Maquis were building strength and liberating small towns, the Allies were planning to liberate France. The Allies planned to invade France from the west by transporting a large invasion fleet across the English Channel to Normandy, France. From there, the Allies would march inland to liberate France before moving north and west to attack Germany. The Allies planned to begin the invasion with beach landings in June 1944. The Allied powers also planned to recruit La Résistance to assist their troops in arriving. However, La Résistance needed to be unified to help the Allies. In February 1944, Charles de Gaulle completed the unification of La Résistance by creating the Force Française de l'Intérieur. The Force Française de l'Intérieur finally succeeded in uniting all military aspects of La Résistance by recognizing important fighting groups collectively as an official Allied power. Now united, La Résistance planned and waited for the invasion. When the Allied fleet landed at Normandy on June 6th, La Résistance began to sabotage roads, railroads, communication networks, and bridges to slow down the German forces. Résistance bands also used guerrilla warfare to combat German forces. Both the Allies and La Résistance spent the next weeks locked in continuous combat with the Germans. As the Allies moved inward, French towns were liberated by La Résistance or local police. When the Allies reached Paris, Résistance bands in Paris began to fight. As de Gaulle wished for only French forces to liberate their nation's capital, the Francais Libres 2nd Armored Division arrived in Paris to fight with the FFI. The German commander in Paris then surrendered to the Francais Libres and the FFI, showing the significance of the Force Française de l'Intérieur as a recognized enemy. France was now free from Nazi occupation. Although de Gaulle exaggerated the roles of the Française Libres and La Résistance in the war, France did play an important role in its own liberation by assisting the other Allied powers. The journey to unity was long, but enabled La Résistance to take a dedicated stand to help the Allied powers to defeat Germany. La Résistance saved Allied time and lives and was able to stand with de Gaulle and the Français Libres to rebuild their nation, restore French spirit and pride, abolish the Vichy regime, fight Germany until its defeat, and create the strong, independent, and united French democracy that remains today.